Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday, it's March 7th, this will be our chart lesson for today, and it was all downhill for the most part today, it looked like it might, we might have another range day, we started off in this range, we opened, went a little higher, turned, we bounced off this low, and traded back up before we finally broke through and then went lower, so what looked like may going to be just more of the same inside this range, has now pushed lower. And we're way into the oversold again. The last few times we've got down to this point, we rallied pretty strongly, even though we didn't go, couldn't get much higher than that. You can see the midline still holding right there. So one thing that we might have to consider here, just looking at this daily chart, is the fact that we may need to expand. The volatility may have gotten so high that we need to expand the bands. Um, Maybe this is no longer oversold. And you can see how, I mean, the whole past year we've been inside those bands and they've served us pretty well. Generally, when you get out and just touch the brown, you're oversold. But you can see we shot way past it here. We could never get back to the highs. We shot way overshot it here. We're overshooting it again. That's a lot to overshoot in a very short period of time. So if we don't rally out of here pretty quickly, it could be that we need to expand these bands. Let me just make this a little bigger again. Um, we still have this measured moved move here based on this first portion. And you also would want to draw this just in case we go lower than that. You want to draw it from there too. That could be another possibility. So we got two targets. If we meet this one and keep going, this would be our next target. And doesn't mean we're going to bounce at either one of those. We could even go lower. So uh, just something to think about. Again, if we continue to stay down here and it's oversold, maybe the volatility dictates we're going to have to adjust our bands here. And if we do, if, you, uh, if I decide to do that, if you do have our envelope strategy or envelope bands, uh, I'll have it posted on the website and you can contact me if I change them. But uh, you'll see it in the video if I change them and I'll talk about it. And you can, if you... Um, Want the new settings if you uh, have our strategy uh, just you can touch base with me I'll post them or whatever where they can be found for uh, members and so forth but anyway uh, I just thought I'd show you that and talk about it uh, but definitely a big downtrend day it looks like we it looked like we're gonna at least test this low again maybe make a measured move based on this this leg here and we could even make a measured move based on this full move here so that's that's my three targets I'm looking at for now. Uh, if we we could bounce early and not meet any of them, but I would suspect uh, we're going to probably meet one, if not all three of them, before it's over. So anyway, that's the way it looks to me at this point. Uh, a lot of times on these failed break lowers out of congestion or range like that, prices will snap back. So we could eat, we could snap back and make another little leg up. I just, but my guess is as bearish as that is, we could be going lower here. So uh, it just it won't take it just takes a little bit of bad news with the negativity hanging over the markets to really send this thing lower. So I'm going to switch over to the intraday chart. We'll go through today's trades, and um, there's not a lot of trades today considering the, all the down movement. There's not as many trades as you would think, but we'll we'll look at those here briefly let me switch over there and we'll go through those trades. and here it is you can see it looked like we may be in a range early but we made this spike down and then went into this flatter channel and really you need to play these shorter term micro channels in here to really know what prices are doing there was real strong we tried to rally out here but, the, but you can see this strong resistance and originally I started with it up here but as we got going I moved it down Kind of played it where that original range uh, was right there. You, you can see that right across there is a little tiny range right there, uh, congestion area. And it's kind of hard to cut. I mean, this is really sideways. So you could trade this both ways, but I don't see any reason to be trying to buy down here, to be honest. I didn't mark any buys down here. Um, it's if you, I mean, we'll talk about them. It's possible you could have tried to buy some of these lows, but. I think you were better off not because really at this point we were just going sideways and you 
you might have had these first two swings and you might have found this low, uh, but it wasn't confirmed. But you can see it playing off that midline. I mean, it, somebody that's been doing this a little while that follows our strategy wouldn't know how to find this this channel even before it gets confirmed here. So uh, that's not hard to do or, or anything that takes a whole lot of great skill other than just having some experience doing it and watching how we do it. So, uh, so that's not that big a deal. Uh, as soon as you got this second swing, you probably should have had this swing run across here. I actually had another one that I was looking at that was kind of running down through there, but uh, this turned out to fit a lot better and the other one never really confirmed or anything. So uh, I believe this is the, it's a bigger spike down in channel is what we have here, but let's zoom in to our um, little bit, bit in our chart here to a little uh, smaller time frame and uh, go through this. Uh, Seven o'clock came just as we were bottoming out down through here. On this correction but we got a clear channel up here fairly strong with a little break and a move to a new high and then we had a couple of legs down so this could be the center of a pattern you definitely always want to consider that so draw that measured move and just watch and see what happens and you can see we didn't get anywhere near that and then we had the big sell-off and that's one of the clues if you if you have a measured move like that and you don't get anywhere close uh, and it turns and goes the other way, it's generally going to trend pretty strongly in another direction. And that's a good clue or signal right there when you don't get up there. So anyway, we had this two-legged correction. You probably look for a possible measured move. But notice we're coming down. You get a break, a move to a new low. And that's really two legs down to a new low. And then it reverses and it pulls back and gives you this higher low. Uh, that's not a perfect setup but it's definitely one you'd want to consider uh, it's a fairly bullish bar and you probably got some shorts going to be trapped here uh, it pulls back again right here but you you don't want to trade that as a failure you want it to be back at the EMA so um, that just looks like congestion across there but we run on up and then we just start working sideways back to the trend line that one is very tempting I didn't mark it. It's an inside bar, and it is off the key entry point, but it's not back to the EMA. It's an inside bar. It's really sideways. Um, this technically is your signal bar, so I didn't mark it. But we came back, and then we, we actually broke out higher first, and then came back and made a triple test right at the EMA and, and had this reversal type bar. As long as you got enough room to scalp out there, which you got plenty of room, I like that trade. And you may not get back through there again, but we did just clear it out. So with a triple test, odds are we're probably going to push higher here. And then it comes back and it runs back. You actually get two legs back here. There's a hidden second entry right there, but no setup there. It's coming back and testing the breakout area again and the EMA, and it goes higher. Um, no setup there, though. We run up here, and, and again, we just kind of keep going sideways. This, the steam is running out of this, but there's still some buying coming in and not enough selling yet. Um, I don't see any reason to want to sell that right there. That's a big bearish bar, but there's just too much congestion across there. And I just think that's a little bit too uh, aggressive to try to trade that um, because you're going short right into the lows there. The bottom drops out of it, um, but you just don't know that ahead of time. Um, if it would have pulled back here and maybe given you a lower high, maybe, but uh, and this one's obviously played out to the upside, both the yellow and even the spiking channel up on this one. So, but we run on down, you make a new low and you get a first entry and a second entry, big bearish bar right there. Uh, there's a little bit of stem, but that's so bearish on a second entry and you've got this channel working down and no new low yet. So I, there's plenty of room there. I like that one. And then it actually makes a new low and gives you another second entry and confirms the trend line all at the same time. So I like that one too, um, just because it's a second entry and confirms the trend line. And you may get another, uh, that looks kind of like a two-legged correction, even though this makes a lower low. So that could be kind of a center pattern there. And you could get another, I would measure from here first. 
you might get another measure move. And you can see that's exactly where we traded to and we bounced before going lower. Um, we drop on down. You might have looked. This is another second entry short. It's right at the midpoint, uh, the midline. So it, I'm not crazy about entering that yet. Um, even though it's a second entry with the trend, we don't quite have the measured move yet. However, um, it's, it's not a perfect signal bar, and you don't have any evidence that the midline's been holding yet. So there's a good chance you get trapped there, and it goes back to the trend line. So, But it doesn't. It drops on down, and then it just kind of works sideways. It, come, it looks like it's going to come back to the trend line, but you get a break right there. And uh, a big bearish bar here. This one is really tempting, and if you draw this correction here, you do get a break or a close outside and a new high. Uh, and there is room to get in and this does break higher first and turn down so it's one you might take but it because it's the first break of the yellow channel even if you you know you wouldn't have the green or the green one in there yet but it's just something I, on a uh, first entry i'm a little hesitant to it to take that one and uh, i mean really basically i'm causing this a new low because all these lows are equal so you're just moving up and it's the first entry. Uh, of course, if you do the true count, it's a first entry, second entry, third entry. So, uh, but there's another thing. You may look at this as a failed breakout of this channel. Uh, generally, you'd rather have a lower high, but with it being enough room there, maybe you take that. I'm not, I didn't mark it, but you could argue for it to be green is where I was going with that. And of course, you drop on down. And I didn't draw this one in there, but there's a trend coming down right there. You get a close outside and you didn't quite get a new low and you work up and you get a second entry right there, but signal bar is not very good. And then it's just kind of chopping along sideways. That's definitely congestion above the EMA. We're not quite back to the uh, key entry point. There's a channel working up there. There's no, uh, you're just, there's no reason to go short there unfortunately there's a lower high here right at the midline but we haven't got back to that key entry point yet still so this one's a little concerning trying to go short right there uh, i mean this could be signaling weakness but it could be signaling that we haven't got back to the trend line yet so you, you don't know which really at that point that's pretty strong move down and overall there's a bearish just hanging over the market. But if you had something different besides this bar, um, I mean, you can see that we opened down here, we traded up, they beat it back down. So it's kind of an indecision bar. And then notice what happens. The next bar is kind of the same thing. It does drop on down, but I just don't think it's worth risking there. And of course, now we're just working sideways. You get a failed breakout. Look like you might get a setup here, but you don't. Um, this is really your signal bar, so you can't really go short. And this one's, even if you like this because it's so bearish, you got to go short down here and look at all that stem. No setup there. Um, drops on down, and now it's doing the same thing. We're going sideways. You get a failed break lower, but you don't want to buy this thing. We're not back down to the lows yet. Uh, it's a pretty strong sell-off. All it does is prices come back up, and we're back in this range here. Um, I, I looked at this as a triple test here, and you might even argue, hey, there's a triple test and a lower high here, but um, I just didn't like it right next to that. Notice you got this big bar, uh, and this one's right in the middle, and these are still mostly inside. This one's right in the middle. Um, the reason I like this one is because it really made an equal high up here, and even this one you could argue to be green i marked this red uh, right out of the gate but it probably should be green more than i think about it because we're not still not back to the trend line so it could turn and do like this one and stop you out uh, if you took this one this one was really tempting but notice how it didn't close right there it still pushed on down um but you only got five ticks out of that trade. So it would have been a four tick failure 
um, if you didn't get a little better entry right there. So um, this one gives you a little better entry. And you can see these last two bars went to the same place. And so that would be what I would be looking at. You st I'd still be a little bit concerned about that midline right there and the fact we're not back to the trend line. So, again, I, I probably should have made this green right out of the bat. I liked it in real time, but but now that I'm really looking at it after the fact, it's really you technically your triple test is right here and you can't take that one. And so maybe you look at this as a lower high, but it's all an inside bar there. Um, those are inside bars, and that really is what scares me. And then finally, this one uh, kind of makes the double top, and it's not an inside. I mean, it's still an inside bar to this one, but notice how we make a higher high there. And so you could, li you could look at that one as a second entry too. So that even though we're not looking for second entries, in this tighter movement, it still adds some credence to that trade, some, some validity to it. And you can see it did take off that time. Um, so, but it probably should be green. Anyway, we, we keep chopping lower. Notice that you just have a measured, I did a measured move once we went through and we went right to that. We pushed a little lower before we came back and then we continued to push down. And I marked this one green. We're still not back to that trend line. Um, but you've got a new swing high here. It's higher than that one. And you get a first entry, second entry. So it's, And there's some congestion here. So it's a failed break out of the congestion as well. Relatively bearish bar. All below the EMA. Even it came back and tested this breakout area here. The measured move. And so there's some reasons to like that trade. Uh, and you could have scalped out of that before it bounced. Um, and of course it runs up there's a second entry here i did not mark this one technically by the count i would look at this as a double bottom and so you get a first entry second entry technically if you count the lows it's a first entry and actually it is a new low even by the count because there's a first entry and then it goes higher and there's a second entry and so technically this is a new swing low here even though this looks a little sideways um we broke higher and turned back down here. So it's technically a, a new swing low right there. So you could count that as a second entry, but I don't like it either way because it confirms that trend line and you just don't want to go short into that trend line, even though it works. Um, we're not probably done to the upside. We're, we, there's a good chance that we're, um, we're going to try to make a new high here. And that's exactly what I was. We actually make two, two legs up to a new high. It didn't break lower there, but there's still a couple of swings in there. There's a lower high here that's really tempting, but that looks a little congested and you're still, you don't have much room back to the EMA. So you just kind of wait there and it kind of chops along and finally it gives you a little trap right there. And that would be a failed second entry. Notice the new high first entry and then second entry. Uh, if it breaks lower there, it's probably going to drop on down now. Uh, it's still a little uh, congested so it's a little aggressive and so I'm not crazy about it but um, I mean we just hadn't had much opportunity good opportunities to enter this and so that may be as good as you get today uh, it's, it's not perfect but there's reasons if it breaks below that little two bar matching I don't know if you can see that let me zoom in a little more but if it breaks below that little two bar match in low, it's probably going to drop. And that's exactly what I actually, it turns out to be a three bar match in low when that closes. Uh, and that is an inside bar, but it's the trap that you're trading here. So when it breaks lower, wherever it breaks lower, which is below any of those three, and you can see the bottom falls out of it right there and kind of drops down, runs back up. There's actually, um, it doesn't ever break lower here, so that's technically a first entry, but there's no setup there anyway. But notice this, we get an overshoot here. This might even be a little flatter right there, but you can see the overshoot. Maybe you say, hey, it's two-tiered, but uh, and we never come back and get a retest, so really it looks to me like it's an overshoot. There's a lower high here, but no setup. And we run into another channel here we do get the break and uh, 
no short here even though there's a failed breakout this is your signal bar this is an inside bar it does turn down off the ema or i'm sorry the midline so um but technically it's just an inside bar and they're not very um uh, reliable so i don't like that trade then we come over and you get a first entry you run up you get a second entry right at the uh, key entry point again i'm not crazy about it because we just came off what looks to be the lows here. Um, it's hard to know, though, but you can see if you drew it right here, you can see that it does appear that the midline is working, but, but there's nothing confirmed on this channel at all other than it looks valid. So, I mean, we could be going much lower. So on a second entry, plus there's congestion, you could treat it like a failed breakout. Um so you may take that trade. You could even look at this as a double bottom with this being a first entry and this being a second entry, but that bar is way too neutral. Would have, would have worked still, but I wouldn't take that trade. And then we just, we actually break out of there. We have a little failed break lower. We run up a me, uh, measured move and you can see it. Now we're just in the upper half of that. And then you get a little breakout pullback, but I wouldn't take a long in this thing. Uh, I'm a little, Leery of any kind of longs. And notice another channel going up. We get an overshoot and then it just turns down. No setups there. We try to go higher again. Close outside a new low. Again, no setup. Um, just congestion there. It does drop on down, but you just don't get a chance to enter it. There's a lower high here, but you're way too away from far away from the EMA and it's uh, it looks congested too. There's support right across there. Um, there's just no way to enter there. And of course it bounces. This is where we, if when you break out, when you back out, it's that kind of sideways stuff. But we're making lower highs and lower lows. So it's really hard to trade this as a range and a downtrend. Um, so I just don't see anything I like there. This one is very tempting back to the long side. Um, because you can see that and you you would expect prices to try to make a new high and it does bounce off the midline here, but I'm just, it's too, so close to the EMA in a downtrend. I'm not crazy about it, but we do break out the upper side and you get a pretty good bar right there. And you can see there's a little hidden second entry. You can see a leg up, a correction, another leg up, oops, and a very bearish bar way away from the EMA. And it, it is up here where there's resistance. So maybe you take that bar, that trade. Just try to ride it back. You could call this a failure when it broke lower, but uh, it looks too congested too. Um, we got another bar here. It's just a first entry. Bounce, close outside, move to a new high. Uh, no setup there on this, but then suddenly it breaks higher and turns down. When it went past there, you could trade that on engulfing bar. You could actually trade this par as bearish as that is, but that's a huge bar it's 26 ticks um i don't know how much room is back to the ema is there enough to trade it mm, there's only one point back there so not a lot of room um i'd probably mark this green as far as going short right down in fact i'd probably skip this trade going short right down here but if you traded it on the engulfing bar um i'd give that one a red one again the, you got to be careful with these engulfing bars. You need to know what you do or you're doing, but it confirms that trend line and it creates a trap. Uh, most likely when it breaks higher and turns down, you know, you got them trapped on a bar like that. But it, even if you don't like any of that, if you're just patient, a few minutes later, you get a second entry short right there below the EMA. It's also technically this is a failed second entry long as well because it goes higher, turns down, then turns back up again. It's all in one bar, uh, you know, it's kind of convoluted, so it's a little more advanced, but it's there. So if you can't see it, play, you know, notice that low, and then you turn down, and then it goes higher, and then it turns down again when it breaks below that bar. So that's two attempts to go up, and that's a second entry short as well. So I like that trade. Um, there's another second entry right here, but that bar is just not quite bearish enough for me. And it's a little bit sideways. 
but we do run up, run down here and you get a first entry, second entry. I wouldn't, you can't really take that second entry, but this is technically a double bottom. So you get a first entry and then it goes back up again and comes back down. And so technically that's a second entry. And so you may trade that on the engulfing bar if you want to be a little more aggressive, but I wouldn't go short down here. It's too much stem there. This bar doesn't qualify by that point. But if you just wait a minute, you get a double top here, and it confirms that trend line. Look how bearish that bar is. Uh, it's just a first entry, so I, I gave it a green bar, but it does confirm that trend line. It is a double top. It is a very bearish bar, and um, there's some reasons to consider going short there. Uh, there's a lower high here, but too congested. We drop on down. There's a second entry right there, but no signal bar. And good thing because it ends up going higher. Actually, you probably would have scalped out of that, though, anyway. Ends up going higher. And technically, that looks like two legs back right there with a big bearish bar. But the problem is it doesn't trigger on that when you get an inside bar before it triggers. And then it just looks too congested. So I don't think there's any trade there. I like being that late in the day. And that takes you into 230. So there's just not a lot of really good. As, as strong as this trend was, there's not a lot of really good trades. A lot of green ones in here. Um, there's a few red. So if it felt like a difficult day to find a good trade, it was. It really because we spent most of the day right in here going sideways. And there's no consistent lows or highs. And so that makes it hard. The other problem is, is there just weren't many uh, second entries with the trend. You got all these little tiny trends, and uh, it's just really volatile now. Hopefully, we'll get a day where you get a lot of second entries at the key entry point because that makes it easy. But on a day like this, you need to be able, you know, talk, not not everybody can find the spike in channel like this. But that's why you trade this shorter term stuff, and it'll help keep you on the right side and generally keep you out of trouble. So, yeah, you'll miss some trades following these short-term uh, micro trends, but that's just the way it goes. You know, the idea is not to take more trades. The idea is to make money. And I can't, you know, the, the sooner you learn that in this business, the sooner you'll improve your, your bottom line. I, the, I mean, I get these emails and these posts in the forum all the time. Is I, I want to add another trade to my, to my, you know, to my trading scabbard so to speak so i got another tool well if you if you've got a trade or two that works why would you want to add another one that's less that's more risky so i mean yeah you always want to learn but don't specifically stick to the basics what we teach you on the very basics and let the rest of it come to you as i would describe it organically through your experience of watching the charts and seeing things print in real time over, uh, on the screen over a long period of time. You'll be surprised what you'll see next week that you don't see this week and what you'll see next year that you don't see this year. And when you get several years of experience at this, you'll start to see things you never, even you were there. I mean, even today I tell people, stop looking at the patterns and look at the context and but they're not good enough to see the context and they still just see the patterns. And it, it, this is a skill. And you got to train your eyes and you, know, you got to improve your abilities. It'll come to you. Just keep working on it. But you'll have days like this where you either have to take an aggressive trade or you just got to sit and be real patient. And, and I mean, if you have to sit all day and you can't take a trade, that's better than sitting for an hour or two and getting antsy and taking a bad trade and hitting a loss. Because if you don't make any money today, that's one thing. But if you lose money today, that means tomorrow not only you have to make what you you know, you got to make the money you lost plus some more money to get ahead. Otherwise, you just got to make some money just to get back to, to scratch, to even. And when you start trading like that, you're not going to have much success. The idea is to make a little money every day and let it add up on it for you. And some days you'll have big days. But don't have a lot of losers and don't, don't over trade. Just be real patient because some days are going to be harder than others. Some days it's like though it's like taking candy from a baby, and then some days like today, even though it's straight down, 
for the most part, there's not a lot of trading. But again, even though this is a strong downtrend, you can clearly see from really right around 11 o'clock, a little after 11 till 2 o'clock, I mean, we're just kind of chopping sideways. And there's no consistent, we're not consistent at the same highs and we're not consistent at the same lows. So it makes, and you can't really buy on a day like this. It's mostly down when you're making lower highs and lower lows. And so that wasted a large portion of the day. I mean, early on there were a few trades and then there's a bunch of green ones in here. For whatever reason, there just weren't a lot of setups. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next.